In this video we will be looking at mitosis and meiosis. So we will consider mitosis, cell cycle, we will look at cell division and cell growth and then we will compare it to how cells divide through meiosis. So let's consider mitosis first. Now in mitosis we've got to remember that this process is all about our cells being able to divide. Now the cells that are produced in mitosis are for cells that we need in order to make all the different types of cells around our body apart from the gametes. So that includes, includes skin cells, stomach cells, etc. So first of all, all of the information that we need for our cells to be able to divide is in the nucleus here. So we have our genetic information inside the nucleus. This genetic information is held on our chromosomes. Now, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Now, because we have 23 pairs, one of the chromosomes comes from the mother and one comes from the father. Considering a chromosome, if we take one chromosome, a chromosome is a section of DNA that has been raveled up into these chromosomes. If we take a small section of our DNA, a small section of our DNA would be a gene. And the genes on our DNA give us very specific characteristics. So for example, you could have a gene which is there to tell us what natural hair colour a particular human may have. You would have a gene that would identify which particular skin colour a particular human may have. Um, so you could have genes that would tell you which particular eye colour a particular human would have. So the genes give us our specific characteristics. They are contained on the DNA and the DNA is all ravelled up into these chromosomes which are in the nucleus and we have 46 chromosomes all together or we can say 23 pairs and they come in pairs because one comes from the mother and one comes from the father during fertilization and when these cells divide they divide through the process called mitosis. New body cells in multicellular organisms are produced by a series of stages called the cell cycle. The stage of the cell cycle where cells divide is called mitosis. And multicellular organisms use mitosis to produce new cells for growth and replacing damaged cells. We end up with cells which are identical, with identical numbers of chromosomes to the parent cell. And due to this, the daughter cells are called diploid cells. Diploid cells meaning we end up with the same number of chromosomes in the nucleus as the original parent cell. So let us consider the stages of cell division. Now, before we can get to mitosis, um, in the part of the cell that is not dividing, the DNA is spread out in long strings in the nucleus. Before it divides, the cell has to grow and it has to increase the number of subcellular structures, such as the mitochondria and the ribosomes. It will then duplicate the DNA, so there's one copy for each new cell. The DNA is copied and forms X-shaped chromosomes. So this would be copied and it forms an X-shaped chromosome. Each arm of the chromosome has exactly the same genetic information as the other arm. So the chromosome is completely duplicated. If you are doing the Edexcel specification, you need to know that this first part before mitosis is called interphase. After interphase, the DNA has been copied and the cell is ready for mitosis. So the next process is that the chromosomes will condense, they become shorter and fatter, and they lie freely in the cytoplasm because the nucleus breaks down. 
During metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the centre of the cell. Then during anaphase, cell fibres, called spindle fibres, pull the chromosomes, pull each arm of the chromosome to either end of the cell. During telophase, the membrane starts to form around the nucleus of each set of chromosomes which are identical to each other. And before telophase is over, we then have cytokinesis where the two cells, the cytoplasm and the cell membrane divides to produce these two cells which are identical to the parent cell that we started with. They have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. They are therefore diploid cells. Each of these cells will contain 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. So if you are following the Edexcel specification, you need to know that the first stage of cell division is interphase, which is where the DNA is replicated and the cell grows so the DNA can be replicated. The second process is prophase. So that is where the chromosomes are condensing, getting shorter and fatter. The third stage is metaphase, where the chromosomes line up in the centre of the cell. The fourth part would be anaphase, where each um, chromosome is being pulled to either side, to opposite ends of the cell. And then lastly, the, the next stage is telophase, where um, we have the membranes forming around each um, of the sets of nuclei and the cytoplasm and the membrane then divides to produce the two identical cells. If you are following the AQA specification, you are not expected to know the names of the different stages. However, you are expected to be able to describe how mitosis occurs. So first of all, you should know that the first part of the cell cycle is that the cell has to grow and has to duplicate the DNA. So we have two chromosomes ready for mitosis. You do have to know that the chromosomes will condense, become shorter and fatter, line up in the centre of the cell. Um, the fibres, the spindle fibres, will pull each arm to opposite ends of the cell. And then a membrane will form um, around each of the cells and the nuclei will form and the cell separates. So the only difference is for AQA, you do not actually have to know the names of the different phases. So now let's consider meiosis. Meiosis is the process by which we produce the gametes, which are the reproductive cells, so either the sperm cell or the egg cell. Now the sperm cell and the egg cell only contain half the usual genetic information compared to all the other body cells in a human or in an animal. The reason being half the genetic information during reproduction comes from the male, half the genetic information comes from the female. So in humans, 23 chromosomes would come from a sperm cell and 23 chromosomes would come from an egg cell. And when these two nuclei fuse together to produce a fertilized egg, we now have um, a zygote, uh, a human cell, which has 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. These will then di um, divide through mitosis um, and produce cells which are exactly identical to the parent cell. Um, and the first stage after producing the zygote would be producing a cluster of cells called the embryos. Gametes are produced by meiosis. In the first cell division, which is here, what happens in meiosis is that the chromosomes line up in pairs, which is different to mitosis. So they line up in pairs in the centre of the cell. So half of the chromosomes have come from the male and half have come from the female. And the pairs are pulled apart by the spindle fibres in the first cell division. 
and they go to opposite ends of the cell and we end up with two cells which have information that is not genetically identical. And the reason why the information is not genetically identical is because during this first phase here, where the chromosomes are lining up, genetic information can be swapped from each pair. Then during the second cell division here, each arm of the chromosome is pulled to either end of the cell the nuclei then forms, the cytoplasm then splits by cytokinesis, the same as in mitosis. And now we have ended up with four cells with half the genetic information in them all. Each of these are gametes and they're not identical to their parent cell. So we've looked at how cells can reproduce through meiosis and mitosis. So now we're going to consider cells that then go on and are not differentiated. Undifferentiated cells are called stem cells. The stem cells, so these stem cells can be found in two places. We can get them from human embryos or we can get them from bone marrow and then we can um, differentiate them into cells that are needed. The stem cells that come from embryos have the ability to actually turn into any type of cell. So they're very versatile. Um, we use human embryo stem cells for things like replacing faulty cells in sick people. We can use the stem cells to, to make insulin producing cells to, to help treat people with diabetes. We can use them for nerve cells to help treat people who have paralysis through spinal injuries. We can even use the stem cells from human embryos in therapeutic cloning. Um, where we use the stem cells to, to treat patients where we want the actual cells that we're putting into the person not to be rejected. Then when it comes to bone marrow, the problem with bone marrow is it's much um, more painful to take stem cells from bone marrow because a needle has to be put into the middle of the bone to get these actual stem cells. Um, they're not as versatile. We can use them in things like to help um, have bone marrow transport, um, transplants in, in diseases like sickle cell anemia. They can be used to produce new skin or new body cells. So that is what stem cells are and how they can be used to make differentiated cells. Um, we can also use stem cells in from plants. So for example, in plants, we have meristems in the roots and shoots of plants. Um, the meristems produce unspecialized cells that are able to divide to form any type of cell. Now, in terms of the, the reason why we would take meristems and try to, to sort of like produce plants that are exactly the same, um, this could be things like we're trying to preserve really rare species or it could be that we want to grow identical crops that have the desired characteristics, for example, for them to be disease resistant. Now, there are sort of like advantages and disadvantages um, in using stem cells, uh, especially to do with animals. The, the potential risks are, for example, that, that there could be tumours that develop because some stem cells will develop um, and divide very quickly, which means that if we cannot control how the rate at which division is happened, then tumours may develop. Um, the other thing is that we could get disease being transmitted, for example, viruses. Um, if the donor stem cells are infected with a virus and then that's passed on to the recipient, that could make them worse. And also there's the chance of rejection. Um, and we've talked about using therapeutic cloning to reduce that risk, but there is that reduced that the, the, per, the recipient's Im immune system may reject um, what's being put into their body. The, the other thing is that also ethical issues. Um, there are people that believe that, that we should not be using um, human embryos because they have the potential to become life. Uh, however, the, the embryos that are usually used um, are the discarded ones from fertility treatments and would be destroyed anyway. And some countries have banned the use of using stem cells, but in the UK we can use it, but under strict guidance and restrictions. 
In 2012, two scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize for their research on stem cells. They showed that adult cells could be reprogrammed to become cells with the properties of embryonic stem cells. Describe the possible benefits of this research, and it's a three-mark question. When considering this question, we're asked what percentage of the time for one cell is represented by stages two and three together. So the whole circle is 100%. So to work out how many segments we have, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in half the circle, so 20 in the whole circle. So to work out what each one of these is, if we do 100 divided by our 20 segments, each one is 5%. So to work out how much there is for stages 2 and 3, we've got 5%, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35% for stages 2 and 3 altogether. Describe what happens during each stage of the cell cycle. So in stage one, we have cell growth, which increases the number of organelles in the DNA replicates. In stage two, we have mitosis. So each set of chromosomes moves to each end of the cell. And in stage three, we have the cytoplasm and the cell membrane dividing to form two identical cells. And this happens by cytokinesis. For this next question, we need to look at the stages of mitosis. So we've got different parts, P, Q, R and S, and we've got to put them in the correct order. So to start off with, what I would do is I would just number them in what I think is the correct order. Um, so this seems to be the correct order. And then if we look at our options, we're looking for R, Q, S and P. So R, Q, S and P. So the correct answer is B. Then for part two, it says the stages of mitosis labelled in S in figure eight. So we're looking at this stage here. What is the correct um, labelling for that stage there? And that would be anaphase. And then for part three, it says interphase is part of the cell cycle. Describe what happens in interphase. So during interphase, before a cell can divide, it first has to grow or increase the amount of subcellular structures, such as the mitochondria and the ribosomes. Um, it then duplicates, so there's one copy of each new cell. 